Hello, welcome back. So, we are discussing about GY's equation. I have briefly explained you that what is the meaning of that S and S square. Now, how do you find the capital C? That is a material specific constant. Now, this is a specific to the material being sampled and it takes account takes into account the mineral content and its degree of liberation that is very very important so if my liberation size is very fine so my amount of sample to be sampled will be different than my coarser grain liberated particles so i should have some prior information before we go for sampling that is we should have some kind of your what is the liberation size of this material. There may be our colleagues from geology they can help us. So, this capital C is equal to F G L M these are all small where F is a safe factor that means what is the shape of this particle which is normally taken as 0.5 except for gold doors where it is 0.2 and G is not the actual G what we are familiar with that is your acceleration term, but here G is a factor which is dependent on the particle size range. So, here small g takes into account the particle size range from what is the coarser size, what is the finest size of that deposit. Now, there is a relationship that if approximately 95 percent of the sample weight contains particles of size less than d centimeter and 95 percent of size greater than d dash centimeter. That means, if my the so last week we have explained it that if my 95 percent passing size or say if my 95 percent of the total population is finer than a particular size and is coarser than a particular size. Say suppose, I have got a size distribution. So, 95 percent of my entire population is finer than may be 1 meter and 95 percent of my material is coarser than 100 micron or say 100 micrometer. So, that d small d is basically 1 meter means 1000 uh, say 100 centimeter and uh, your 100 micron means 100 micrometer means say your 1 micrometer means your 10 to the power 6 meter. So, you can uh, say 10 to the power minus 6 meter sorry. So, you can calculate it what is that. So, there is a formula now that if d by d dash that if the ratio of between the ratio between the largest and the smallest and largest I have defined because it is very difficult to identify which one is the largest. So, we do sieve analysis and or maybe screen analysis and we get to know what is the 95 percent passing size or 95 percent uh, say passing size of the two different sieves at the two extreme things. So, the d by d dash is greater than 4 that means, if the ratio between the largest and the smallest size is greater than 4, then g is 0.25 like that. If d by d dash is greater than 2 to 4, then it is g is equal to 0.5. If d by d by dash is less than 2, is g is equal to 0.75 and d by d dash can theoretically be only 1. That means, all are of same size. Then is the d by d dash is equal to 1. So, in that case g is equal to 1. 
Now, we said that is F G L M. So, we have said that the C capital C is equal to F G L M. So, F is most of the cases it is 0.5, G we have got a set of conditions and now look at the L. So, L is basically related to the your liberation size or the meaning of that. Now, suppose this is my entire rock sample that is my average size of my material available into the deposit and this is my wanted material and that is the liberation size that is the denoted by say capital L. So, the particle size is the d and this liberation size of my wanted material is L. So, that small l is equal to capital L by d to the power 0 0.5 and there are also correlations for that like that it is easily understandable that if this ratio is less than 1 then L is equal to 1 and if this ratio goes on basically increasing that means, if my entire rock is very big in relation to my liberation size then it can go this value could be 0 0.02 also. So, like that. So, from this set of conditions I can find out the value of L the small l, but the important criteria is that I should have the prior information of the liberation size. Here in this case you see that this particle interestingly here both L and D suppose now if I suppose I have crushed it and then I have liberated it and then I am saying that what is the L by D. So, this is here L is equal to D. So, here is equal to 1 L is equal to 1. M. So, we have defined that we have explained that how do we get F, G and L. Now, it is the M. So, M is a mineralogical composition factor which can be calculated from the expression M is equal to 1 minus A divided by A in the back end 1 minus A R plus A T with this equation, where small r and t are the mean densities of the valuable mineral and gang mineral respectively. That means, what is the density of your wanted material and what is the density of your gang material. And A is the fractional average mineral content of the material being sampled. That means, what is the average mineral content of that material being sampled. How do I know this value? Now, this value could be determined by assigning a number of samples of the material. That means, when you are doing geological exploration, you have to do the analysis of that and the more number of uh, samples you take for analysis, you get the better value of this A. I will show you that now we are saying that how much of sample we should get and for that also even I have to know that what is the your average assay content, what is the mineralogical composition, what is the largest particle size, what is the smallest particle size and so on. So, we adapt some sampling technique. What are the common mistakes? As I said that these days you can rely your analysis, but still I think the how do you take out the sample that is most neglected subject in entire mineral processing industries across the globe. One common error that is what I will try to show you through this animation it is not
see for some reason it is not working. So, here it was showing that this container was moving up to this and coming back, but that is incorrect because what is happening? If it goes up to this and then comes back, so that means you are collecting more of these red particles, but it is the entire population it is coming from the conveyor belt and that is your red and black particles. You want to know that how much of red particle is there or how much of black particle is there and then what are the relative sizes and all this. And you see that how we can induce bus towards the red particle if the container if the cutter or the sampling system if it just stops here and comes back because you are giving more residence time for this red particles to be collected. So, you are inducing a bias towards the red particles, but here that is the correct sampling that it should go out from the entire stream and then comes back. So, that you are giving equal opportunity of the black and the red colored particle to be collected at the same rate. So, that is one example that how you can induce bias and how you can overcome the biases in during the sample collection steps. What are the common sample preparation errors? Before you analyze as I said at the beginning that there may be a lot of delay in between your collection of samples and you are when you are basically doing the assay analysis or say size analysis or something else. So, it is very common that there is a chances of there is a chance of contamination. Suppose, I have collected a sample from a mine site 10 days back and I have brought it to my laboratory for analysis but I have left it in the open atmosphere. So, it may pick up it may pick up extraneous materials which may contaminate my sample. So, when I am analyzing I might see that there is lead and then I may start saying that look you will be going to mine this sample, but there is lead a lead is very harmful, but that lead has not come from your mind sample, it has been basically say contaminated by some other sources. Then there could be losses like your adsorption, condensation, precipitation like I want to do moisture analysis of that. And if I have not taken precautions, if I am keeping it in open atmosphere and say suppose the atmosphere is humid, then it might give me more moisture than what exactly what uh, exactly it was having. If it is a summer, then my moisture may get start evaporating out. So, my actual moisture analysis or my actual moisture content in the sample is different than what I will be analyzing. Then alteration of chemical composition many times my sample may start getting oxidized, because if I have not taken precaution because of the uh, your say a good uh, example again is the fine coal, if you leave it just open it may start getting oxidized. So, I may get different results, so we must preserve the sample. Alteration of physical composition like I want to do size analysis of that but because of the handling and transportation they may and they, they are basically uh, the very uh, say brittle uh, say specimen. So, I may get a different size distribution when I will be analyzing than actually what it was collected. Then if for very fine particles there is a chance of that particle may start getting agglomerated if it is exposed to moisture because moisture acts like a binder. The many cases it is involuntary mistakes makes sample numbers because we may be collecting 200 different samples and my sample tags for identifying that okay, this sample I have collected from that location, 
but if they are basically mis uh, say actually misplaced or say actually if they are basically wrongly done that is I have that sample number one the description what I am thinking that has that level has gone to the sample number 10. So, that my entire reporting of data will be uh, erroneous. Many times when we are under pressure of producing data and all this there are chances of deliberate faults like we want to I think I do not have to explain that more and I would strongly advise everyone that please do not get into this. So, let us solve one small problem I wanted to show that how do I use the g wise equation and for simplifying the problem I have given the values of most of the factors. The problem is assume the following sampling conditions for a gold bearing ore crushed to about 0.93 centimeter. So, I have used a crusher which is supposed to crush all the material below 0.93 centimeter, but actually you may have some oversized particles. With m that m value I have given is 16 into 10 to the power 6 for a gold silver amalgam f is 0.5, g is equal to 0.25 and l is equal to 0.00035. Assume that the size of the largest pieces of that particle is 1.25 centimeter. So, problem number 1 is given the data what error is introduced when a sample of weight 10 kg is taken from a pile of broken ore. Suppose, if I collect a 10 kg of sample, how much is the error introduced? Because many times we have to compromise that how much of material we should collect, because more materials you want to collect more cost you will be requiring. But I must know that with this amount of sample how much is the error. So, what I have to do? If I use g y z equation, you remember that m is equal to c d q by a square. So, now here we want to find out the value of Yes, that what is the error? Because s square is the sum of square errors. So, let us find out first s square by putting the values and we also know that c is equal to f g l m. So, what is the value of c capital C? Now, if I put the value of capital C that is f is it is given f is 0.5 g is 0.25, l is equal to 0 0.000035 and m is 16 into 10 to the power 6, which will give you a value of 70. So, what is the s square? s square is equal to c d q by m and d is the largest size of the particle I said that this is 1.25 centimeter. So, it is 70 into 1.25 cube divided by m is I say 10 kg. So, 10 kg you have to take it into gram. So, it is 10,000. So, that is giving you 0 0.0136. So, what I have to do now? I have to find out the s that is square root of that value. So, that will give you a value of 0.1169. So, that means precision is 11.69 percent. That means my average value, the mean value 
will have a deviation of plus minus 11.69 percent. So, a precision of 11.69 percent must be compatible with the data quality objectives of the sampling protocol for this value to be expected. Now, question comes whether you are happy with this 11.69 percent. That means, if your assay analysis is 5 ppm and your when you do the exact analysis that value may be 5 percent plus or minus 11.69 percent of plus of 5 percent. Whether you accept that or value or not that is your prerogative. Now, if I want to minimize this I said that no I am not happy with the 11.69 I need 5 percent precision. So, then you have to redo the calculation and that is what I have the next problem based on those data giving that suppose I say 11.69 percent is too less maybe I can have up to 15 percent I am happy with up to 15 percent. So, that is why I have given this problem that what weight of samples should be taken from a pile of broken ore, so that the sampling error will not exceed a specified precision of 15 percent. That means, so what will happen naturally that with 10 kilogram of samples you are getting an error of 11.69 percent. Now, I am just trying to evaluate the 10 kg is too much. Can I reduce this weight? So, you have to increase your precision value. I say that okay, up to 15 percent is acceptable. So, let me see that what is the reduction in the weight. So, here what I have to do? I have to rearrange that that m is equal to c d q by s square that is the original equation. Now, if I put the value of c, c is 70 we have already calculated d we know 1.25 centimeter that is 1.25 to the per cube. Now, in this case is s square is equal to 0 0.15 because this is in percentage. So, 0 0.15 square. So, that will give you a sample weight of 6.07 kg. So, this is a good example of telling you showing you that if you reduce the quantity of your material to be collected from the lot that is for original population. You can do that provided you are prepared to compromise with the precision level. Similarly, you can practice it that if I want 5 percent precision, what will be the additional sample weight I require. So, that means, if I want 5 percent precision the minimum weight to be collected should be more than 10 kilograms. So, a sample mass of approximately 6.07 kg is required to achieve a precision of 15 percent of this ore type. Similarly, if I want a lower level of precision I have to increase the sample weight and I have to use this g wise equation. Now, you see that g wise equation I can apply it for knowing that what is the minimum sample weight I should have based on the my the various characteristics of my deposit starting from the liberation size, 
you have size distribution, even the densities of your wanted material and gang and everything. But what it does not tell us that how the material, how the that 10 kilogram or 6 kilogram samples what I am suggesting that how it should be collected. It is only telling that how much we should collect, but it is not telling that how it should be collected. So, in my next lecture, I will try to show you that how the samples are being collected in actual operations and before you collect a sample, what are the planning is required, because planning is very important for this sampling campaign, we call it sampling campaign. So, how you plan ahead and what are the ways you can collect the representative samples from a plant, from a mine site, from a uh, say stockpile and what are the common mistakes we do while collecting these samples. And that will probably help some of the industry people to rectify their sampling related issues and even the students who will be joining the industries in due course of time, if they have this prior knowledge in sampling, I think in most of the processing industry, most of the other industries also, the sampling is a very, very important issue. Thank you very much.